I think it's one word, it's just passion. You know, I just, uh, very passionate about what I do. There is no mistaking Phil Romano's passion for his art. I paint the music sometimes, and I have that, I'm really blasting, I'm conducting. As the music gets louder and faster, so do his paint strokes on the canvas. I tell everybody it's a, this is a, a nude painting. A nude painting. Phil's ability to visualize and create something others can't even imagine has been his stock in trade since his first job as a paper boy at age 12. So I knocked on everybody's door, you know, and I said, okay, winter time's coming. I said, how much extra will you pay me if I put the paper between your storm door and your regular door? Some people said 10 cents more a week. Some said 25. But I did it anyway, whether they're going to pay me or not. And that extra service creating something people needed and wanted more than doubled his weekly $12 profit. That's what I think that, that business is all about, is having a point of difference. Not doing everything the same way everybody else does it. And that service motivation philosophy became the foundation for Romano to create over 40 different restaurant concepts. Good evening, welcome to Nick and Sam's. Phil's wildly successful Uptown Steakhouse on Maple in Dallas is a manifestation of Romano's business philosophy. That's with Ali and Jeff. <laughs> Thank you, brother. In a city crowded with good steakhouses, Phil brought in the Bronx Bluster and Luster, and it packs them in every night. I think uh, people say in this town that this is the cheers of Dallas. Well, you gotta make it exciting. You know, have that point of difference. Another point of difference at Nick and Sam's means a grand piano in the busy kitchen. A kitchen open for all to see. I think it's very important that, that people understand and see what's happening in the kitchen. I really practice human dignity. You know, I want to, I treat people like I want to be treated. A lesson he learned from his father, an electrician, who mortgaged the family home down in Florida to help Phil buy out his unpleasant partner in his first successful restaurant. Now you talk about pressure, okay? It's not the sweet smell of success that makes you work hard. It's the fear of failure. But despite three successful restaurants, Phil couldn't convince his San Antonio banker to finance a new concept. The banker said he was doing Phil a favor by rejecting his idea of a hamburger restaurant to be called Fuddruckers. Thank you very much, you know, and I said, but I'm gonna do this anyway. Phil got 10 guys to put up 15 grand each and Fuddruckers' concept of grinding its own meat and baking its own bread took off. And a year and a half later, Phil took the restaurant public. The value of that $15,000 was, was $3,400,000 on a $15,000 investment in less than a year and a half. And I always say that I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't do the things that people told me not to do. But one man who recognized the Romano nonconformist genius was Dallas restaurant titan Norman Brinker, who Romano asked to take over his budding new restaurant concept, Macaroni Grill. He came in, he's in there for 20 minutes, he looked around, he said, okay, he says, how can we do the deal? Brinker swapped $5 million worth of his stock for Macaroni Grill and then tried to hire Romano. I said, Norman, I can't work for Brinker. I never had a job before in my life. Instead, Phil forged a unique partnership with Brinker. He would come up with the restaurant concepts and get them going, and Brinker would buy them out. When I was doing Eatsies, you know, and Norman came to, to me and we were looking at it and he says, now tell me again, how's this going to work? I said, Norman, I don't know. I said, we're going to find out soon. And now many grocery store chains are copying the Eatsies ready-made meals to go concept. All of that success gave Romano the ability to back some other non-conformists, like a couple of heart doctors who couldn't find investment money for their new invention, the heart stent. There's so many people in the world today that have a stent in them. If I didn't finance that thing, if I put my money at risk and do the things that, that other people wouldn't do or didn't think about doing, well, a lot of people wouldn't be walking around today. Including Romano's close friend, Vice President Dick Cheney. And that's where I'm at today. I just like to feel good about the things I do. And that's why this truck rolls out of Eatsy's three times a week to feed the chronically homeless, those who refuse to go to shelters. These are hungry people out there on the streets. Let me get a truck and go to them. My wife came up with this idea, you know, and we talked about it. Said, okay, let's do it. We have 20 gallons going out tonight, and that should feed about 200 people. 
Lily Romano says they've not missed a run since starting Hunger Busters five years ago. She's proud that everything on this truck is the best that Eatsy's and Nick and Sam's dish up for paying customers. Like the fresh-baked snickerdoodles from Aphrodite. I'll let you try this broken one. I don't think it's going to make it out. They're so fresh. The Hunger Busters truck goes to places in Dallas that many people don't even know about or wouldn't go there even if they did. This is one of the most selfish things that Lily and I have done. You know, and then you, you selfish? Do it. Selfish. You know, we do it because it makes us feel good. And it does the same for those on the receiving end. And uh, it, it helps. Hey, guys, go get me and, uh, It really does. Dignity is a, is a big word within our lives. Self-esteem is, is another big word to, to know that, that someone do care about them enough to offer them the best that we have to offer here in the city. I, I have never enjoyed anything more in my life. Bill is now talking to us about his nine-year-old son, Sam. And my life's work right now is, is, is uh, my new concept with my son and, and bringing him up and, and uh, making a difference. He takes Sam to school every day, drilling him with business flashcards. He is the entrepreneur, that's his favorite. I'm trying to get this instilled in him that, you know, this is his community, he's got to keep it healthy. He's got to give back to it because you're going to be taken from it. And like he bonded with his dad, Phil says he's doing the same with Sam. We, we paint things together, mm -hmm. and he enjoys painting. And the teachers in school say, well, he's a very creative, very good artist, and so forth. Mm -hmm. so. While Phil will be remembered someday for the difference he's made in a lot of people's lives, Phil says above all else, achieving this one goal would make the difference in his life. If, if I could get my son to respect and love me half as much as I love and respect my own father, I'd be happy. It's our responsibility to make productive, good citizens and, 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 and people that are going to take care of our country and take care of the things that we need to have here.